Yo, welcome back to the Teep This Podcast. I'm your host, Charles Little II, and this is episode number 14 of the podcast. And my guest on this installment is truly in a class all his own. He's a living legend and one of the most creative Muay Thai fighters to ever grace the sport. And I'm speaking of none other than Danny Bill. He's a golden era, seven-time world Muay Thai champion, born in Cameroon, Africa, and raised in the streets of Paris, France. And I'm really happy to have had the chance to sit down with Danny and talk about where Muay Thai was, and where it is, and where it's going. And let's not waste another second. Let's jump into the podcast. Homie, take this. Homie, take this. I eat that mat like a deep dish. Hey, I'm in. Danny Bill. Yes. Uh, this is very special for me because, I mean, you were around you can really talk about where this stuff really came from. Yeah. And then Sean being a coach, you know, is pinnacle because as Muay Thai comes to the U.S., it's the coaches here in this country that are really going to shape Muay Thai from the ground up, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and so I just want to start it off, bro. Just, you know, let us know. I mean, I know you have seven world titles. Um, what, what really, tell me what it was like growing up in the streets of Paris from Africa. Yeah. You know, it's like some city, it's like neighborhood, like ghetto. I grew, I grew up uh, in the neighborhood. Oh, you have black uh, with people from uh, Morocco, people mm -hmm. from uh, a lot of people, but another country, we grew up together. Is this and, 1980s? Uh, oh, 70s. Uh, 70s. 70s. When I I grew up in France, I got uh, five years old, and I grew up in the neighborhood in France. And uh, you know, we have to learn to fight because a lot of people they have steal your your money and everything. And uh, but back in the days, I I like dance too before uh -huh. the fight. I like soccer. I like dance. I like uh, kung fu movie. And one day I watched TV, I saw one Thai guy, he fight with uh, Rob Kaman. Okay. Rob Kaman. I don't you know, know who that is. Rob Kaman. Rob Kaman from uh, Niger. Okay. For, yeah. He's famous Holland. from Holland. Okay. Rob Kaman is famous. Uh, and this is on TV? Yeah. In, TV. in France? 85, 86. So, so is, like is kickboxing, martial arts in general, is it just... On, is it bigger in France than it is? It's bigger. It's in Europe, bigger. it's bigger. It's bigger. In Interesting. Yes. It's bigger than Muay Thai. Yeah. Muay now Thai. I'm not sure. Yes, it's bigger. It's now. even bigger than Muay Thai still. Yeah, yeah, still well, tell me this, because here in the States in the 70s, we're watching Chuck Norris and yeah. Bruce yeah, Lee. Yeah, yeah. What are they watching? The same thing? Uh, like 80s? Well, back then, no, there was 70s. no internet for them 70s, to be watching. No, no. No, no 70s. Like you said, you just saw some 80s. Muay Thai on television. Yeah. Like for me, that's insane. 80s. Like, yeah. We don't have any, we don't have Muay Thai on TV. We have Muay Thai in 85 in France. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, we can see every, maybe every three months. And the Muay Thai that's, that you're seeing in France, is yeah. it French people fighting or is it Thai? You have Thai and French too. Huh. This event is the France in Paris. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and, and tell me about your family. You, you guys all come from Cameroon. Is yeah. it mom, dad, brother, sister? Who, what, what is yeah. it? Yeah, I have uh, two brothers uh, who grew up in France, but my mother too. And uh, that she came in France like uh, 80s, 80s. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, everybody grew up in France. Can you all fight? All your brothers, they fight Yeah, too? before, before. <laughs> and, uh, they, they fight like five years. But me, I, I love it. I love it. I still. But they fight for just five years, and uh, because back in the days, it's very hot. Muay Thai is very hot because we we don't have a uh, you know uh, shin guards. Yeah, before never only for real. We fight for real. And elbows, knees. Yeah, yeah. You training. You train. Yeah. You doing Muay Thai. Yeah, back in the days, no chin guard. When you're studying Muay Thai in France as a boy, yeah. How old are you? Uh, Thirteen. So you're 13. Your trainer, is your trainer French or he's Thai? No, he's from uh, Algerian, Algeria. Huh? Yeah. You don't know Wim Muay Thai. Before, everybody played karate and kickboxing. 
back in the days in France. You don't know the real Muay Thai. You know, that, that, that shit is happening here too, yeah. in America. Yeah. <laughs> People teaching Muay Thai. Yeah. And uh, uh, when I yeah. go in Thailand for the first time, it was like 92, I saw the real Muay Thai. But before that, I don't know the real Muay Thai. Why did you go to Thailand in 92? Well, because uh, I, I grew up with many friends dead, you know? They, 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 in the they streets? Got to in the street. And uh, one day, I like 80s, 18 years old. And I said, no, I, want, I don't want to stay in the, the neighborhood. Uh -huh. I want to go to another, another country. And I go to Thailand. Yeah, but let me ask you that. Yeah. Why Thailand? Why you oh, go to Thailand? Because uh, I love uh, Muay Thai. Oh. And, and I see, because I fight many times amateur, and I want to stop uh, school. I want to stop school and be and work for myself by myself. And I go to Thailand to learn more. And you're 18 at this 18, time. 18. Yeah. Uh, I, tell, tell me the first time when you saw Muay Thai and you go, oh, sh I got to do that. Yeah, when I saw the first time, I said, what the fuck? Because I see one Thai is like that. We fight with the guy, big, big guy. I said, whoa, I want to I want try this because I have different weight, you know, like maybe 40 pounds. And that type beating, yeah. I said, oh, I want to try this. And I try, and uh, every time I go back to my home, I tired, you know, I'm very tired. I say, whoa, I like this because when you're young, you have so energy. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I want to learn something, give me something tired. You know, it's like, it's like a long day of sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, training, yeah. you know. And, uh, Sean, when did you, when did you, yeah. do you have that moment too? The moment that Muay Thai clicked and you were like, oh, I got to do this shit. Mm. It was before Muay Thai. I discovered uh, Benny the Jets uh, gym, Benny Yurkidas. Yurkidas, yeah. Because I was being trained by a guy named Vince Madako. So you were into martial arts already? He, well, no, I had anger issues as a kid. My parents threw me in uh, martial arts because Vince said it was a good idea. And uh, he showed me all the basics, we did a lot of privates, then he got busy doing movies and stuff, as a lot of people did in those early 90s. So he put me into touch with uh, the Jet Center, and that's where I started training over there. And uh, back in uh, 92 to 94, Jet Center closed down. Mark Parra opened up House of Champions. I started training with uh, Peter Cunningham mm -hmm. and Rick O'Kane, and they were fighting at the time, so I decided to go to the Mark Parr's House Champions to pursue. I was the 18 year old kid. So, and, and, and what is this? Is this Muay Thai or is this kickboxing? This is still, this is still it's, like- It's Benny. It's, it's, so it's like Benny. Kyokushin. Yeah, kind of karate stuff. to kickboxing. I mean, karate to PKB karate above the waist to right. low kicks oh, okay. to kickboxing. Right. So then when I started fighting uh, in 96, I had about 20 smoker fights. Then I had like 25 amateur fights, and then I started going into pro. During the last part of my amateur fights, around 96, 97, we started doing knees, and I didn't know really what to do with it. Out of nowhere? Uh, you know, the rules changed. You know, kickboxing with knees. Now you can knee. Now you could grab and knee, but only grab and knee one time, then let go. Mm -hmm. Then there was a lot of, there, there's no elbows. Then there's new knees to the head. So. All those rules kept on changing to the point where me as a fighter, as, um, as somebody who wanted the, the best for myself mm -hmm. and um, coming from a really good um, camp, um, I needed that. So the very first time I saw Muay Thai was 98 uh, IKF title and I was taught a certain way to block knees and that didn't really work. Uh -huh. I was still able to win by a margin because of my, you know, training. Uh -huh. And I was just better at something that he wasn't better and I just won the fight. But after that fight, I was like, what the hell is this? Uh -huh. I was grabbed and I couldn't get out of that clinch. Sure. And it didn't scare me. I was just not going to put up with it. I said, this is, this is not going to happen and I need to educate myself. And that's when uh, my coach, uh, Coach Rick, Rick O'Kane, uh, took me to Muay Thai Academy. Uh, at the time, there was uh, Saxon, Janjira, Koban. Janjira, yeah, I know um, that. Kunakweed, uh, uh, Kurex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of big names were there, and all those guys actually have gyms now. They sure do. 
And uh, those guys also officiate our fights and stuff now. Yeah. See, I'm new, so all yeah. those names, yeah. I now meet them now because yeah. they don't fight anymore. They yeah. pat me on the back. Okay, good luck. You know. <laughs> yeah. This is like 2000, 2001. And okay. then that's when the Malai Pet came to the oh. scene, to the to yes. LA. And so that was the first guy. That was the first time. That's the first guy I ever saw. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, <gasps> what that was the it. Hell? I was yeah. done. Yeah. I went, I typed Muay Thai yeah. by the gym. Yeah. I've been from gym to gym. Wow. Yeah. Never stopped. Um, I was so in love with it. Yeah. I'm online. I want I want more information. So yeah. that's why I started the podcast. Oh. It's like 2000. Oh, this is 2015. Okay. Oh. Yeah, 2015. Yeah. Um, so 2016. Shit, it was 2016 when I started the podcast. Right. Mm. Uh, 2017, I had my first point book. Fight and then 2018, I go. I went to my first tournament, mm. and I won the tournament. But they were the guys were not good competition, so I wanted better competition. Mm. And then my last one was better competition. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Now you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I mean, shit. So Muay Thai just it's for me. It's just I like it so much. I think it's so s slick. Huh. And watching you fight, you know. Huh watching all the little sweeps mm -hmm. and the little tiny, small movements. Mm -hmm. It was blowing me away watching these old fights in, in Square on ESPN2 and people discussing it and commentating it. I'm like, what? I didn't even know this shit was around. Who's, who's talking about this? Yeah. You know, I watched you fight Ramon Deckers, you know, on YouTube, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. It was brilliant. Mm -hmm. It was brilliant, bro. Mm -hmm. My question is like, mm -hmm. are you that good? Because of the training you got in Thailand, uh -huh. or just because that's the swagger that you brought to the table. Uh -huh. I, I, I saw your seminar today. Uh -huh. I hear you teaching. Can you teach that shit? Can you teach? Uh -huh. Can you teach that swagger, that style, or does the guy have to have it? Yeah, you can teach, but not many people can do it. Uh -huh. You can. It's like Mike Tyson is Mike Tyson. Roy Jones is Roy Jones. Right. You know. He can teach fight. you, yeah, but you still can't fight like Mike. Yeah, yeah. Me, that's a good point. It's like uh, before nobody teach me for sweep. Yeah, I learn sweep when I fight, but in the gym I do it. Only right. me, I do it. Yeah. And right. my trainer, they say, "You're good at that." <laughs> where, where, where you learn this? I learned this in the street. Yeah. Back in the days, I like, I like uh, sometimes fighting the street. Yeah, and in Paris, yeah, in Paris. And uh, when I fight, I in my mind I say, okay, I want to try this when I fight, and true, is work. But nobody uh, teach me. Right. To Danny, have you ever been hurt bad fighting? Has anybody ever fucked you up good? Oh yes, one time. Yeah, uh, when I like sixteen years old. In a, in the ring or in the street? No, in the in the ring. Oh, yeah. Because uh, before I never run, uh, I fight my first fight. I fight like ten times. My first ten times, I win knockout, 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 and I let eleven time I lost uh, round three. I'm very tired uh -huh. because I never run. Oh, and uh, so your cardio, the cardio. Yeah, I fight two. How were you knocking these guys out? Were you powerful to begin with? Yeah. What were your, what was your power? Oh. What was your go to? Just low kick. Yeah, low kick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, yeah. You just, you're just a good fighter. Uh, you know, I watched, I watched you fight Koban. Yeah. That was interesting. Mm. He was shorter than you, yeah. and he's strong, yeah. and his hands were low. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he, was, funny, huh? he was, he was taking, he was yeah. boom, yeah. you get, then you want, then boom, boom, boom. Yeah. You know, um, are you were really, were you made, mm -hmm. were you made in the streets of Paris, or mm -hmm. were you made? In Thailand, who made this you into the fighter that you are? Oh, uh, you know, street and Thailand too. Yeah, because uh, when I go to Thailand for the first time, they they never show me the way Muay Thai. Like in nineties, if you from uh, another country, Thai people they don't want to show you Muay Thai. Sure. Every time they say, "Why you come here?" Muay Thai is for us, not for you. Why you come? Why you don't play food, soccer? I say, I won't just fight. I say, okay, you won't fight? Okay, okay, you fight next week. 
but they never show me the technique. Nothing, yeah, yeah. Just, okay, 10, 10. Oh, yeah. I have to watch the boot fighter. I watch every day. I watch. I, la I watch the technique. And I go fight and I try to do it. When you're there in Thailand, are yeah. you alone? You live by yourself? No, we, I go with four friends. Four friends. And you're just living there? No, I stay like first time two months. But I fight two months, I fight three times. Yeah. For my first time. Do you have a family now, man? Do you have a wife and kids and stuff? Uh, I have three kids and a uh, wife. Yeah. Not married, but I have a uh, yeah. yeah. Um, was it difficult with Muay Thai? I mean, you have like 100, how many fights you have? 160, 180? Yeah, yeah. yes. More than 100. More than 150. Okay, so yeah. you fight. I mean, is really, is Muay Thai really your wife? Yeah, or so, yes, my yeah, because I love you know, my Thai give me everything. I travel a lot, you know, I go some country I, I never want to go before, but I, I fly a lot of country, yeah, in the world, yeah. And uh, when I, you know, when you from the hood and you fly, you fly, you say, okay, it's good for me, I fly a lot. So, did you make good money fighting? Uh, in Japan, yes, in Japan, Japan, Japan. Uh -huh. in Thailand also. Uh -huh. Me and Raman Dekas, uh huh, 90s were the best. How many times you and Roman fight? Well, just one time, just that one time, yes, yes. yes. And uh, -huh. uh you know, uh, in 90s, golden era, yeah, when you fight, it's like that money, Thai, give you like this, but uh -huh. it's good for this country, it's like 200. Uh, Bat, 200,000 baht uh -huh. when we fight. Yeah. It's like big over there. Are they paying like that nowadays or no? No, now no. It's like crazy. Muay Thai is bigger, but yet. It's bigger now. Promotion. Now yeah. you have a lot of promotion now. A lot of like uh, uh, Thai fight, Thai fight, thai fight uh, oh, yeah. Max Muay Thai. Max Muay Thai. Thai. Many, many. So many. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, back in the days, only one promoter for European, not too many promoter, only oh, one, oh. it's called Song Shai. Song Shai, so yeah. all the Europeans, all the if, Farang come yeah, in through him. Yeah, if you want to be the the best in Europe, you have to fight the best Thai, but only Song Shai bring, bring you to fight the best, in, you know? How old are you when you win your first title? Uh, 20. You're 20 years old, that's yes. in France, yeah? No. Oh no, in France, 15. 15. Yeah, yeah. Amateur. Yeah. B class. B class. B class. And uh, the next 80, 18. 18. The next. How long are your fight camps before you fight? When you were fighting? Uh, one here. No, no, no. Oh. When you train for a fight? Yeah. Do you train uh, eight weeks, six weeks, two days? No. I know something. You just, you, you just stay ready anytime, huh? Yeah, yeah. Before, when you're professional, you have to stay ready because uh, sometimes uh, they call you like uh, two days before the fight. It's like my first belt in Thailand. Uh -huh. They call me two days before the fight. And they say, you want to fight tomorrow in Thailand? Uh, I say, okay, I'm ready. Because one guy from France here is broke. He can fight. Okay. And uh, they call me. And I take the fly, and I come in the morning for the King birthday, the first one the night. King week. birthday, yeah. yeah. And I fight the, the the night time, but I come in the morning. You know, Cosmo Alexander talks about that too. He fought for a King's birthday. Maybe it was a different year. Does, oh, that, yeah. does that happen every year? Yeah. Okay. The first one ninety three. Oh, okay. So every year every yeah, after that. Since then. And what year was this that you were fighting? Uh, oh, it was the first one. The first one. Oh shit! The first one. Six European, beautiful. For the Thai people, they bring the best European fighter, and, uh, and then throw them to the ties. Huh? Yeah, and uh, everybody lost. Only me, I win the first belt. But nobody know me. Yeah, because that. you know what? As a new person to Muay Thai, when I do my research, yeah, I thought Raymond Deckers, yeah, was the first European. Yeah. To win that king's birthday. No, he never win. 
But it no, was you. We, me. The Didn't first. they give him like some sort of... The, the king gave him some sort of gift or something. Yeah, they gave him that because he's strong. He make people uh, gamble a lot. Uh, <laughs> no? Uh, but no, he never will win. We fight like maybe five heels. Every here, every here. here. Yeah, win four belts. He always lost. Yeah, man, listen. Watching you fight, I've been studying yeah. this fighting because yeah. I had to go get in there. I had to... I can't just keep talking about it. Like, fuck, you gotta fight. And every time I fight, I'm like, oh, shit, I gotta try that again. I gotta figure yeah. this thing out, you know? Yeah. And when I watch you, you do everything. Oh. From the outside, oh. from the inside, uh -huh. inside me, long me. I love the constant forward movement. Uh -huh. I love, and you know what else I really love? All the little, all mm. of the things. There's so much stuff going on, mm. you know? Mm. It's, and that stuff, I wonder, like, where did the fuck did that come from? Is that just you? Is that just yeah. how you are? You made yeah. that shit yeah. up, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm like that. Yeah. 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 You know? yeah. yeah. I can teach you, everybody, sometimes I teach many fighter, but I tell him, do it like I'm doing. You can do it. Tell me this. You know? What about your brain? What about up here? Yeah. Everything I hear, something you got this beautiful life. Oh, I love fighting. I'm the best. I just yeah. fight. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. You have to have, yeah. I mean, you, I know when I go into these fight camps, sometimes I can't sleep. Mm. I feel like there's a monster, you know, you know, one time I was sparring. Yeah. It was like two weeks before my fight. I was sparring like this. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. like, Charles, what are you, come on, man. And I was like, ah. yeah. do you ever have this? No. <laughs> no, no, no. You no, said, because, no. Uh, you know, uh, I want to be wary. Some, but before, sometimes I don't wait. I don't, my, I don't have cardio because I have a lot of problems. Okay. But, but in my mind. But your mind is always ready. I, yeah, ready. Because uh, it's my job, you know. If you want to be the best, you got to be ready for something if you want to <laughs> fight. So that's what it was. It wasn't just you love fighting. It's that you wanted to be the best fighter. Yeah. Yes. I say, okay. I fight the best Thai. Like, I, I think like that. Okay. It's like many people like before in Thailand, they say, uh, Danny, you fight strong guy. You champ before. I say, okay. Me, uh, I don't champ, but I'm from the hood too. You know? I think like that. Uh -huh. You know? Uh, they fight like 200 times. Yeah, I fight maybe... 10 professional, 10 wow. fight, professional. Wow. But more than 200 fight. Yeah. I fight uh, one guy is called uh, No Quick Devi. Yeah, I saw, I saw that fight too. I saw that fight, yeah. Before the fight, many Thai people say, hands up because he killed one guy. Yeah. With eye kick. Only yeah. one guy, yeah. Well, I saw you take his legs uh, away. I fought San Chenoy. Yeah. San Chenoy is famous before. Everybody said that it opened because he's soft. And yeah, he, he opened me here, uh -huh. here before. But many, they fight many times. Me, maybe 10, 20 professional fights. But I don't care. I don't care. Because in my mind, I say, okay, I'm from the hood too. You know? 100 Thai people in the for the kingdom of that. 100,000. Everybody, oh, you lose, you lose. But no, you yeah. say, I don't care. I go. Danny, you know? every time you go to fight, yeah. do you ever, you fight different people? Yeah. But is your mind always the same? Yes. Or do you prepare different? Oh, this guy's tall. This uh, guy's fast. This guy's strong. No. Do you change? Yeah. You I, figure it out when you get in or what? Yeah. When I go fight, if I fight uh, European, I think about my skills because I know Europeans, they don't have skills. You know, I prepare my mind and say, okay, for me, easy, easy, easy fight. Mm. But if I go in Thailand before I fight Thai guy, uh -huh. I prepare my mind for hands up. Because, because they have skill. Yeah. You don't know what time elbow, uh, kick, you have to prepare your mind. You know, it's different, different. You have to prepare different European and Thai. No, yeah. that's beautiful to hear. I, I, yeah. I've heard technique always trumps power. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm now 
reminding myself of that when I go and spar or go to fight yeah. and my opponent is bigger or stronger yeah. and my heart goes, <gasps> mm. and then my mind says, oh, no, no, mm. don't just use technique, Charles. You know? yeah. And it's been working for me. I've been yeah. doing, I've been doing better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you always try it. Yeah. Man, uh, yeah. How, how much of do you know about Muay Thai in the USA? Wait, wait a minute, first, where do you live now? Paris. Oh, you still in the You still in the hood, or no? You out of the hood? Yeah, out. We grew up and we go to another city. Are your parents still alive, man? My father passed away six years ago. My mother is still here. That's cool. Yeah. Shout out to mom. You you guys, your family, you guys are tight. You guys are close. Yes. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um. Yes. So, what do you know then about Muay Thai here in the USA? I come here uh, first time tw 2001. Okay. I come here in New York. I come to the first gym, but my time is not popular. 2001. Right. I go make too many places. I do everybody jujitsu, jujitsu. I go grassy gym, jujitsu, many gym, and uh, talk with uh, some guys. Do you need to stretch that out? No, I'm uh, yeah. it's working it out. And uh, it's not popular. 20 years ago, my time. And I won't fight when I come here the first time. And I talk with many people. But there's no one to fight. Everybody say, no, you're too strong for here. In this country, nobody won't fight. Yeah. Only Thai people, they won't fight. Yeah. Be, uh, 2000. Uh, John Sonan, uh, you come here. It's Koban here. Koban is here too? Yeah, it's here. It's wow. Yeah, 2001. But People from US, no, they don't know real Muay Thai in 2000. That's why I say no. Do you know much of about what about how Muay Thai is happening here now? Yeah, I see. Now I see it's good up. It's good what do you up. think? It's good for for people, but but I uh, don't see the good fighter. Yeah, I just see. Uh, Buffaloes, you know buffaloes. Yeah, you oh, see, oh, oh, oh. yeah, but no, I don't see smart. Some people, but amateur, the professional, no, no, no smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best for me, I see, is Kevin something. Kevin. Kevin uh, Ross. Yes. Yeah. But you need to learn more. Yeah. Wow. I don't see somebody make me feel like oh, you understand my time. Yeah. <laughs> When you're training, mm. all your life training Muay Thai, yeah. you train with one trainer, one coach, or do you move around? I move around because my coach, I finished with him in 95. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, I do it by myself. I go to Thailand fight, no coach. Sean, how was your how was your journey? Was Were you under the tutelage of like a single trainer? You know, or, you know, I'm I'm edging toward that whole gym hopping, that whole thing, which I think I feel like it's an individual story. Um, we all, you know, want to be loyal, but you know, you gotta you gotta get what you gotta get. You gotta get what you need. Right. So it's really important that you brought Danny here. You know, I love your gym. Um, you know, I really need to. I love what you do with the with the promotions that you guys have, the the the, the sanctioned fights that you guys have been coordinating here out in the parking lot, bringing up new fighters. I personally think that these coaches are the most important custodians of how Muay Thai grows in this country. Uh -huh. You know, um, can you, are you able to help Muay Thai along in yeah. this country? Yeah. He's no. here right now doing the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> doing yeah. seminars. There you go. Yeah. What, what you need to get out of uh, this gentleman is uh, the knowledge. You know, again, he, mm. he, he's a major. Uh, his main thing is strategy. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's hard to teach people that. Mm -hmm. um, when I started, I uh, again I was with Vince Murdoco. I was doing privates. I joined. I joined the class, and I was the youngest person in the class in Sensei Lily's class. Benny's uh, master. Benny Wikid is his sister. Mm -hmm. Then I moved up to uh, Peter Cunningham's class. Mm -hmm. So then. And I was under Peter and Rick O'Kane for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And then I, once I saw where Muay Thai was headed, I started training with uh, Kroonak Serum Pai. And I started training with him. 
2000, 2001, something right around that area. So, um, but I've been loyal to, I haven't trained with anybody else but those three gentlemen because they've given me everything that I possibly need. And as far as staying with your camp, as far as staying with one particular trainer or however many trainers you, you know, you um, are with, I'm totally for it. As long as you're constantly being challenged, mm -hmm. as long as you're constantly learning, uh, I believe in that. But if you need, if you, the, the reason I went, I was telling Danny this, the reason I went, uh, I saw Kroonakweed, well, I saw a guy named uh, Ajan, uh Brian Dobler. Sure. I, f I saw him fight. And uh, again, I was raised with a lot of kickboxing and boxing. I started with karate, but I, I st stopped doing it because I liked the, the kickboxing aspect of it. And then we, we had a lot of ties to professional boxing gyms. So I got a lot of really good Western style boxing. And I trained with a lot of, um, I sparred with a lot of pros and that's how I got better. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I had the hands, I had the legs, I had the movement, but I needed clinching. I needed knees, I needed elbows because that's where it was headed. Yeah. So when I was watching the fight and I saw a uh, Dobler fight, he had really, really good posture. And I was asking the referee at the time, hey, who's, who's his trainer? And he was telling me, Kronakrid, he trains at my gym. And so I was there Saturday night, the fights, uh, those were the, the fights were on Saturday night. Monday, Monday night I was there. I walked into the gym, they already knew who I was. And I said, I, sir, I'm here to train. I'm, I'm here to learn. Wow. You know, um, but if it wasn't for uh, uh, my trainer Rick, sure, he was the one who took me to the Muay Thai Academy at the time. Right. He was the one who said, "Hey, you need this," because he himself he said it. He said it at the same time I was thinking it. Because when you're getting clinched at need, and you're like, "What do I do? What do I do?" <laughs> you know, like I literally heard you know one of the fighters from uh, from uh, Canada. Yeah. As him and his team were prepping to come to the U.S. to compete in the tournament. Oh. He literally told his team, we're going to clinch all month. Mm, and then he said this, because they ain't got no clinch in the USA. Uh, right. He yeah. said that shit out loud. Yeah. So I definitely, I work on my clinch all the time. Uh, it's different now, though. There's, yeah. the, like I said, like with the, with the internet, as, as far as it being, you know, bad and good. Yeah. The good thing about internet, you learn. Mm. And even though if you're not learning, it's in your face. You, you, you're seeing the clinch having a big effect if you don't know how to block against the clinch or work in the clinch. I myself wasn't much of a clincher at the time because I was more of a boxer, but if you know how to clinch and if you know how to uh, knee, it could oh. nullify a boxer. So I had to teach myself or I had to learn how to not get nullify nullified. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because you know it's coming. Yeah. And then how do you stop it so then you can do your game? Yeah. So that's what it becomes. He was able to impose his his game on other people. That's why he doesn't have styles make fights. Oh, oh. Well, the what, what crazy thing about this guy though, Danny's style, it's it's constantly changing throughout the fight. Oh, because oh. it's all about strategy. It's oh. all about, he, he sits there and he studies opponents. Oh. And that's a lot of, and that's why, I, that's why I'm, bright, I'm bringing him here. Yeah. Because uh, growing up, again, when I, was, when I was training, Peter Cunningham was fighting, Danny Steele was fighting. Oh. These were big names back then and um i was learning from them if i had trained with anybody else i wouldn't have gotten as good as i got sure i wouldn't be as confident in certain things that i'm great at oh. if it wasn't for them but again everybody's style is different sometimes like sometimes peter shows me some stuff and i can't use it because i'm not peter uh -huh. peter's yeah. like peter's peter and you know what i'm saying and you yeah. speak to like so you have to that's why i was saying like training with those three gentlemen mm. you put them all together and you 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 got to do you right yeah. but at the same time it's not over yet because you're always constantly learning you have to learn because no matter how great you are there's that guy who has your number mm. okay. but you got to totally. be as ready as you as possibly can but that's what i wanted for for the gym there's yeah. a, certain things that you know, but it's better coming from the horse's mouth himself. Yeah, no, this is invaluable. I mean, you know, Danny, you come and you you show you show brilliant techniques, uh -huh. but what makes it so powerful uh -huh. is when you give the context, uh -huh. when you tell the story. Uh -huh. So you show this, this, you know, we're going to show you this clinch, uh -huh. but then you tell where it came from and why. 
-huh. So now they have a they have some understanding of the principle of it, you know. Um, I, I wanted to learn a little bit before I let you go, because we're about to wrap it up, but we, watching you fight and watching you be Danny is one thing, but I really want the listeners to be able to get a sense of who you are, what it's like to be Danny Bill, what it's like to be so far in front of the way. You know, you are uh -huh. world champion, uh -huh. but not a lot of people talked about it. Yeah. More people, I think, are talking about you now uh -huh. than when you were doing it. Uh -huh. What was it like, man? What's it? What is it fucking like? Who the fuck are you, man? Like, what's it? You're from Africa, you know. Sure. You're from yeah. like, what's it like? I mean, like, you know what I mean? Let me do a question. Are you asking him how did it feel to not be like to be underrated? To no, I how, how, did, how did you persevere through that? And no, here's what I want to know. Are, what, here's what, what I want to do. I want you to take me through the Raymond Deckers. Take me through that fight because. But real quick though. Uh, Deckers, yeah. how far, how long after Deckers did you retire? Where was Deckers? What number was he? Uh, what fight, year? We fought 97. you retired? Oh, I retired in 2011. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 2011. But you stopped, you stopped so, once. You, st you, you took a yeah, break, yeah? Yeah, I took a break. break 2000, 2000 2003. Right, right, right. right. Three year break. Yeah. yeah. Three but years. So, so you were fairly in your prime? You could say when you fought Deckers. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. 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 That was that was good, Raymond. Yeah. I mean, I was. Yeah. yeah. I fought every two months. I mean, that was good, yeah. Danny. Yeah, he was. He was big, in strong, two. fast, yeah. in two. Yeah. But when I fight him, I don't want to win knockout. I saw that because I we fight many time same night. We know to, together. We, yeah, yeah. We go party right. together. Of course. And when you saw the fight, I just play technique with him. Right. Because I know him, he had only yeah. uh, punches. Punch. Punch. Yeah. And when I fight the guy like him, for me it's easy. I like Buffalo style, Dutch style. Mm -hmm. I fight many times in Holland, always win with people only punch. For me it's easy because uh, you know because you have technique. techniques. And when I fight Ramon, I don't win knockout. But if you see, I I kick yeah. two times. But I don't. No, I know those. You you faint and then it yeah, comes up. Yeah. Start. Because you know, before the fight, he said, "Danny, I, he tell me, if I don't win knockout, I know you win." <laughs> oh yeah, if I don't knock you out, yeah. I feel you. Wow. Yeah. Points. Yeah. Points wow. Fights, yeah. Wow. And uh, yeah, many people like him. Only he, it's easy. I never lost with puncher. You have a lot of kickboxing fights, though. Yeah. But you really are Muay Thai or kickboxing? Muay Thai. More Muay, Muay Thai. Last question for you. Last question. question. Help me with this. Mm. In my country, MMA is so big. Yeah, now I see. Do you like MMA? Uh, I like to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I like uh, I like uh, skills. I like like white, uh, what what is it? John Jones. John Jones, Jones yeah. yeah. Uh, you know their friend uh, their friend that kid Silva, something like that. Anderson, Anderson. Oh yeah, he's because from Brazil. We don't know what he do. Yeah, you know. Works it <laughs> That guy, that kid, like that this. kid Sunni that came here. He's like that. Yeah. Oh okay. yeah, that kid's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, Buffalo style. Is, uh, many Buffalo I see in the. You just move. Yeah, yeah. If I do nineties, if I do this. Easy for me, like Roy, like uh, John Jules. Right. Oh, right. Uh, because we see uh, only. Uh, you know? If you are my coach, yeah, I'm excited for my fight. Yeah. My fight's in six weeks. Yes, I'm excited. Wow, 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 wow. I'm running. I'm where I'm eating. I'm lean. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah, I'm like. <laughs> yeah, you're like what's wrong? Like, <laughs> no, yeah, I tell you. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna help me? I tell you, if you train hard, you fight it easy. You don't be, you stay cool. You have to be smart when you go fight. Don't uh, don't scare because if you train hard, it's easy when you go fight. You have to understand that. I'll okay. tell you about this. You train hard every day here in the gym, and when you go fight, it's easy. 
you know, no stress, no That's stress. It. That's but the point. Here in the gym, you have to do everything in the gym. <laughs> uh, you fight for like 20 minutes, but here you train like two hours, yeah. you know? Yeah. Two hours, you have to go yeah. home tired. Yeah. You know? And you go fight, easy, you know? Wow. But you have to understand that. Your seminar was powerful. powerful. Yeah. The techniques were, were unique, effective. I love the context, the stories that you told people. Mm. Um, and uh, we don't have we don't have you. Mm. There's not there's only one Danny Bill, mm. you know. Mm. So we have to get you more in the U.S. You have to come and work with more coaches and with more. Mm. And you see all all the kids are like super excited, mm. you know, today. Yeah, you know? I see that. You know, so yeah, uh, thank you. Really. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sean Yakubi and Yakubi yeah. Muay Thai Academy. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's important, man. We gotta, you know, someone was telling me before, you know, Charles, if you don't know where you where you come from, you're not gonna know where you go. Uh, um, so, you know, this is a great opportunity. Yeah, yeah. You know. Last last year we met. Uh, we we met, met. Yeah, in the gym. Uh, Brian Pop Joyce. Yeah. Huh. Did you ever fight because you want to, or you fight because you have to? Why do you choose because, this fight shit? No, because I want to. Yeah. Yeah. No, because I want. To. In Thailand, no. do you think the fighters there mostly fight because they want to or because they have to? Both. It's both. Huh? Both. Both. Some I remember some fighters they don't like fight, but they fight like three hundred times. They don't like fight yeah. just because they need help family. But many fighters before they don't want fight. Hmm. I, know, I remember one one Thai you call. Uh, Cha Chai Pai Sitong is dead, he passed away. I trained with him in Sichotong gym. He's a, he's a, before he's, a, you call him Samat Tu. Samat Tu. He's a famous before. And him tell me he don't like fight, but he's very good fighter. Mm -hmm. And uh, he do it because he to have family. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. people is like that. In other words, don't yeah. be a bitch. No. Yeah. When you do that, you can be the Don't bitch. be a bitch, no. yeah. <laughs> no. Too hard. I mean, I guess yeah, yeah, that I mean, you know, I could talk to you all night, man. Yeah. But we'll wrap it up. We'll go have some we'll go have some Thai food. But yeah. uh, you know, I'll put um I'll put a bunch of links yeah. in the in the in the blog yeah. post so that people can, you know, follow you on social yeah. media. Yeah. If they wanna if Jim's wanna bring you over, yeah. can I just have them call Sean or yeah. Just contact. Yeah, you reach out. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Okay. On your, on your yeah. Instagram, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you hear it. You hear it there. You know they yeah. they want you to come to the gym. There's only yeah. one Danny Bill. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, ramen is popular because uh, I told you the story because me, you see my color, and back in the days, Thai people, they know I'm, I have skills, but ramen. For the TV, this color. Better complexion. Yeah. But uh, Thai people, they know who's the best technical. Ramon Punch in technique. And yeah. I watched. Yeah. I watched. I saw the faint. I saw the punch. The knee was right behind it. I saw you move sideways, knee. Mm. I saw the elbows. It's just all of it. The clinch. Mm. Outside game, inside game, the jabs, the oh, what about this? That left and then this? Yeah. Boom, boom. Yeah. Oh my god, you love that. Yeah. Oh, I saw you. I must have saw you use that on yeah. at least three different you yeah. pow, pow. Yeah. Boom, pow, pow. Yeah. Oh, that's your favorite. Yeah, I like it. Oh shit, I'm gonna start practicing like that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Yeah, hey, I know you do. It works. Yeah. All right, well, we'll wrap it up, man. Let's go have some yeah. food. Thank you so thank much, you brother Danny much. Bill. Yeah. And thank, thank you, Sean. So what's up? Homie, deep this. I eat that mat like a deep dish. Wow, man. There is always so much to learn, and Danny Bill has so much to share, and I had so much to ask. But uh, his schedule was tight, and we only had so much time. But Danny Bill is headed back to the USA in October. So, fighters and students and coaches, please take this opportunity to come out and meet up with a living legend. We will have Danny Bill in the flesh on October the 3rd. That's right, October 3 from 7.30 to 9 p.m. 
at Muay Thai School USA in North Hollywood, California. Danny Bill will be there in the flesh conducting his teaching seminar and sharing secrets. He will be also conducting private training and supervising sparring. He's ready to talk to coaches, to talk to students, to talk to fighters. He's got a lot to share. Space is limited, so reach out to the gym and reserve a spot before the spots are all taken. That's Muay Thai School USA. You can look them up online, MuayThaiSchoolUSA.com. Send them an email there or call the gym at 818-980-6688. Again, that's October 3 from 7.30 p.m. till 9 p.m. Danny Bill is back in the flesh at Muay Thai School USA in North Hollywood, California. This episode of the podcast has been brought to you by Starting Line Studios, videographers and photographers. Starting Line Studios, they shoot music videos, brand films, influencer videos, weddings, fights, anything basically. So if you need something shot and you need it shot well, give Jordan and Tita a call at Starting Line Studios. You can find them online at startinglinestudios.com or on Instagram at SLS Creators, all one word. This episode is also brought to you by Yakubian Muay Thai Academy in Chatsworth, California, offering Muay Thai kickboxing and boxing for all ages, led by Coach Sean Yakubian. Call that gym at 818-322-0050 or look them up online at ymtacademy.com. Thank you, Yakubian Muay Thai, for all of your support and helping make this episode of the Teep This Podcast possible and rich with priceless information and experience. Next up on the podcast, I will sit down with a warrior whose name you may or may not be familiar with, but whose story you will not help but to feel. Chris Kokores is an amateur MMA fighter from a small mountain town, but he has quite a large story to tell about winning and losing, about loss, and about hope. So don't miss that one. Please follow, rate, and review the Teep This podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Stitcher Radio. And follow Teep This on Instagram and Facebook. And subscribe at teepthis.com for discounts on apparel. And witness the beauty of Muay Thai as it is captured by my camera lens. And much more. As always in parting, live well, love much, laugh often, and train hard. Sawadika. Oh. Say it again, say it again My adversaries take a left, right Straight to the chin, playing the win Play with my hands, you lay in the sand With your feet up, rather get my feet rubbed Vibing out to deep cuts My name be in my enemies' mouths We cut from a different cloth Hennessy style, we finna be out Chile Somewhere way, way, way out of the sea there is no need to think twice or blink twice You know we live this fight, we been this night Since dudes was rocking British nights, get it right Homie, you know me, I be low key That's on me, me oh my Kick so high, you go fly It's the art of eight limbs, yes, it's Muay Thai Check the stove top, so hot, hot Keep a jab in the stash, homie dash I bet this round kick that you won't lie So if it's on and it's on Let me know Homie, take this Homie, take this and eat that mat like a deep dish. 